Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's January 3rd, and if you can't tell, I'm back in the studio here at home. Took the red eye last night, slept in a bit here this morning, but here we go with today's briefing. Take a look at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see the system we have right now. It is spawning some thunderstorms down here across California. Wouldn't be surprised to hear of a lightning strike out here across some of the Oregon coast. You can see the cold air cumulus there, frontal system across the eastern portions now. And we've got additional systems coming through here. Nothing too exceptionally strong, but we're going to have rounds of mountain snow going on. We've got some wintry weather here going on for eastern Washington, potentially. I'll show you some of that here in a moment. And then we'll take a look off into the extended forecast, as always, to see what is coming next. You see Seattle, Tacoma. There is some winter weather advisories. If I click on that, you can see this is from 10 a.m. Saturday to 10 a.m. on Sunday, greater than 3,500 feet generally. And they do mention a Snoqualmie Pass and the additional details there. Uh, rain, snow mix at Snoqualmie Pass Saturday night into Sunday morning. Brief period of late freezing rain may be possible early Sunday morning. Total snow accumulations, two to six inches expected at Snoqualmie Pass, which is right there at 3,000 and feet. And they also have access to that east wind here, which can keep things trapped at the surface, cooler air. And that's why they do mention that freezing rain potential. And here's Portland, Oregon as well. Winter weather advisories up and down the Cascades, mainly 4,000 feet and above, 3 to 8 inches, 10 to 80, 18 inches are above 5,500 feet as well. And this is again from 10 a.m. Saturday to 10 a.m. on Sunday. And freezing rain potential. This is uh, this morning here. Actually, we're now into the early afternoon. So uh, Highway 2, you might be seeing some of this activity here as you go through the day today, or mainly just a tracer to maybe a tenth of an inch of some glaze there. It doesn't show anything for I-90 down towards Ritzville, Moses Lake, or Ellensburg, Yakima, Tri-Cities uh, also. So it should be good on that front. Uh, probability of freezing rain across Across some of western Montana here. You can see there's Missoula, 22% chance. There's snow changing to light freezing rain Friday afternoon. So that could be ongoing anytime now. And I just wanted to point this out. There's a pretty good snow event going on here across portions of Montana. Uh, not an exceptional one here, but you can see Bozeman 4 to 6, Billion 6 to 8, and you could be running to some blowing snow out here as well. So heads up if you're traveling out into Montana here, going through some of the higher terrain and whatnot. Even Helena getting 2 to 3 inches there also. And again, some of that blowing snow out there with some gusty winds. Uh, Spokane, we covered that. Taking a look at current observations, you can see Seattle checking 45. There's some light rain going on, but you can see the showery weather now moving in. Look at Astoria, nice and warm, 54 degrees there. Uh, Spokane checking in at 34. So I'm not sure if any of this uh, precipitation is of the freezing variety, maybe some light freezing rain. I, I'm not sure if some places are still right below freezing, uh, just off to the west of Spokane there. But it looks like Spokane right now is above freezing. You can see Sandpoint right now, light snow. Look at Mullen Pass, heavy snow uh, currently falling as of the last observation. Now, taking a look at where we are as we go through this afternoon. So here we are. This is the 18Z. Let me make sure that is all up to date there. There we go. You can see the precipitation continuing on and through today. Some of that showery weather moving across as we go through tomorrow. And then we go on in through Saturday night. Another system moving across the area. Another round of mountain snow with that. And then we got a weak system here kind of trying trudging in towards our coastal areas is just a meager low, but it's going to keep that precipitation going for western portions all the way on in through probably Monday morning at least. Then we're going to get kind of a pattern change that we're going to go over here in a bit of detail starting right now. The European on the left, GFS on the right, Hawaiian Islands bottom left, there's Washington, Oregon here, and again the American model is the GFS model. 12Z, that's about 4 a. it is 4 a.m. there, Pacific Standard Time. Now, put this into motion. You see one, two, and then three systems there. And then things start to change up a bit here. We get some Arctic air trying to move down across the Great Basin. And you can see kind of that cooler air mass moving in there. Build the ridging here across the West Coast of North America. Maybe just getting brushed with a weak system there. A weak system moves through British Columbia. But you can see we, we do dry out, it looks like, as we go towards the mid portion of January. And then how are things going to do after that? It's the big question. Are we going to start to get some cooler systems down into the Pacific Northwest here as we go on into the second half of January. That seems to be the question. Of course, models start to diverge greatly as you start to look far off or 360 hours here. You can see the European with no deep low out there and the GFS with this monster off the coastline. But if we take a look here, what we're looking at is 500 millibar height. So you can kind of see how, you know, we've got some pretty, you know, at least at 500 millibars, relatively speaking, the heights are fairly high. And once they start dropping down here, then you start talking about some cooler 
cooler weather. And it's not even that great of a signal as you look out towards, you know, this is January 15th here. So you can kind of see some of that cooler air trying to get in here, but no good signal as of right now. However, the extended forecast is pretty interesting. So you're gonna to wanna to wait towards the end of the video here to check out that. But if we look at what is going on, we get these systems rolling through. And then as we go on in towards the early portion of next week, you can see some of that cooler air filtering down in towards the Great Basin there. And we scroll off into the future a bit more and we're gonna be dealing with some drier conditions. And then we start to bring maybe some cooler air as we go towards the very end of the run. We're grasping at straws there, but we're just kind of checking out to see what could potentially be coming uh, as we get the next uh, uh, pattern change in here and some uh, additional systems as we go through January 15th, 16th, 17th. Well, we'll see how that turns out. But looking at 24 hour running total there, Gutierrez ratio, this is tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. And again, that snow, it will be, uh, wrapping up there for snow call me pass but then we're going to get another round here as you see sunday morning another four or five inches that's showing there and some snow for the cascades northeast washington my buddy is out here at up over 3600 feet says he's got like four inches since this morning so yes from the higher train getting some decent snowfall amounts and this hunting cabin has over three feet on the ground. Uh, but taking a look off into the extended, you see, look at how we just kind of dry out here as we go on in through the mid portion of January. So we'll be watching to see that and see what happens as, you know, the next systems try to work their way into the region. Uh, 100 meter wind speed here. So again, during the day today, we're dealing with some blustery conditions for the coastal areas. It's barely even worth mentioning, but you can get some gust up over 40 miles per hour. And then you see the additional systems. And the last one right there, this is very weak low as we go on in through the day Monday. Then we start to turn things offshore as we start to dry out a little bit here as we go on in through early next week. And you see probably a strong offshore wind event across California as we bring some higher pressure across the Great Basin. Also driving some offshore winds here across Western Washington in Oregon at times as we wait to see what's next. Quileute Airport, you can see today some gusts into the mid 40s there. Again, nothing like what you're not used to. Astoria, you know, barely worth mentioning some gusts into the 30s. And Seattle, Tacoma, no windstorms in sight as you can see, but we'll be watching daily to see if that is going to change. This was issued on December 31st. This is for January. Look at this above average for a lot of the West for the month of January on the latest Climate Prediction Center. And then you can see uh, January also above average signal there. So take that with a grain of salt. However, it's a pretty long, out, far out forecast. Six to 10 day though. This is updated today. You can see the above average for the West, below normal precipitation amounts. That makes sense with what we just looked at here with some ridging dominating the West Coast. Eight to 14 day, kind of near normal and then below normal precipitation. We'll see how that turns out as well. And January 3rd, so three to four week temperature outlook, you know, they got some above average here. In fact, let me back that up again and we'll jump back here and you can kind of see near normal, but above average across the Southwest. Uh, three to four week precipitation outlook, above normal. But now looking at the extended forecast, something interesting starts to happen as we go towards the end of January. So this is the European weekly, sir. I mean, granted, we're looking at a seven day running um, 850 millibar temperature anomalies this is at 5,000 feet. You see some Arctic air here across some of the Northwest territories in the Yukon, Alaska, Northwest BC, and it doesn't get too far down into central BC. But then there's this signal that keeps showing up. And I, you got to, you know, this is just entertainment right now. This is early February. Some of this Arctic air is showing up getting much closer to the Pacific Northwest. So that's something we're watching there. And some of the models are showing that. I'll show you some other models here in a moment with a CFS. We'll scroll out here again at 5,000 feet. And you can see, uh, again, that Arctic air, mainly central or North British Columbia, up in the Yukon, Northwest Territories. But then we scroll off in towards the early portion of February. You can see some of that Arctic air trying to make its way closer to the Pacific Northwest. So maybe we'll get some kind of early February snow event here across the Pacific Northwest. No promises, of course. But we'll take a look at the CFS monthly. This is for January, and this was run this morning. And you can see February, maybe that Arctic air trying to make a pass here at the Pacific Northwest. Northwest, grass minute straws right now. But anyway, it is nice to be back home. Hopefully you guys are liking the videos. We'll continue to break things down day by day, of course. Click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.